In this presentation, we will understand special program number 2, printing right triangle number pattern. So, without any further delay, let's get started with this lecture. The topic of this presentation is special program, print the right triangle number pattern. In this lecture, we will understand how to write a program to print the right triangle number pattern on the screen. We will see the right triangle number pattern in a moment. Before writing the program, we must have the understanding of the problem statement. So, let's look at the problem statement first and let's understand it properly. Here comes the problem statement. Write a program to print a right triangle number pattern as shown. This is the right triangle number pattern we want to print on the screen. Now, the main question is how to print this right triangle number pattern. To print this right triangle number pattern, we must know how many rows and columns we need in order to print this pattern correctly. So, we must have the information about the number of rows and columns needed to print this pattern. How to know this? We can draw lines around these numbers to know how many rows and columns we need to print this pattern. Let's draw the lines. This is how our pattern looks like after drawing the lines. Now, we can easily visualize how many rows and columns we need in order to print this pattern. There are a total of 5 rows and 5 columns needed to print this pattern. This value is situated at row number 1 and column number 1. This value is situated at row number 2 and column number 1. This value is situated at row number 2 and column number 2. This value is situated at row number 3 and column number 1. This value is situated at row number 3 and column number 2. This value is situated at row number 3 and column number 3. Similarly, we can write the rest of the row numbers and column numbers as well. This is row number 4 and this is column number 4. This is row number 5 and this is column number 5. In this way, we can write the rows and columns. And now we have the information about how many rows and columns we need in order to print this pattern. It can be observed that we need a total of 5 rows and 5 columns. I hope this is clear. The next thing that we can observe in this pattern is that each value here depends upon its row number. This value depends upon its row number. If we are at row number 1, we know that we just need to print 1. If we are at row number 2, we just need to print 2s. If we are at row number 3, we just need to print 3s. If we are at row number 4, we just need to print 4s. If we are at row number 5, we just need to print 5s. So, these values depends upon the row numbers. I hope this is also clear. Up to this point, we have enough information to start writing our program. So, let's now start writing our program and as we proceed, we will fill in the gaps in our knowledge. So, let's write the program. The first thing that we need to do in our program is to receive the input from the user. Now, what is that input? The input needs to be the number of rows that we will receive from the user. So, we will ask the user to enter the number of rows. If we know the number of rows from the user, then we automatically know the number of columns. Because it can be observed that if user has entered 5, then the number of rows must be 5 and number of columns must also be 5. If user provides 10, then it means that number of rows must be 10 and number of columns must also be 10. So, if we have the information about the number of rows, then we can automatically deduce number of columns from it. So, this one thing is clear. And in order to print this pattern, we need nested for loop structure. This is the second step that we need to do. So, after receiving the number of rows from the user, we need nested for loop structure to print these values correctly. Let's first receive the input from the user in this way. Rows equal to int, input, enter the number of rows. This prompt will be displayed on the screen and user will provide the number of rows. We will take that input 
and provide that to rows variable. So here rows variable will eventually point to the value provided by the user, which represent the number of rows. Here we need to typecast the input because the input that we will receive is in the form of the string. We need to typecast it to integer. That's what we are doing here. We know this step from our previous presentations. Now after this, we need nested for loop structure in order to print this pattern. The outer for loop will represent the rows and the inner for loop will represent the columns. So, if we are at row number 1 and column number 1, we will print value 1. So, within those for loops, we will use the print function to print the values that we want to print. Let's write the outer for loop statement. For i in range 1 comma rows plus 1. Now, what does this mean? Here variable i is representing the row number. As I have told you already that the outer for loop is meant for rows. Therefore, this variable i represents a specific row number at a time. This range function will return a sequence for us. We will get values from 1 to rows because we know that this represents the start value and this represents the stop value. The stop value must be stop value minus 1. Here, after subtracting 1 from rows plus 1, we will get rows, which means that we will get value 5 if the user has entered 5. So, in this way, we will get the sequence 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. We will get these values from this range function. And these values are provided to variable i one at a time. First, we will receive 1 here, then 2, then 3, then 4 and then 5. In this way, we can visit each row. Now, within this for loop, we need another for loop. Let's write this for statement. For j in range 1 comma i plus 1. Now, why I have written i plus 1 here? First of all, this j represents the column number. And here the second argument that I have provided is i plus 1. Now, the question is why I have provided i plus 1. If we look at this pattern carefully, if we are at row number 1, then we must stop at column number 1 and we must not proceed any further. If we are at row number 2, then we must stop at column number 2 and we must not proceed any further. After printing the value at column number 2 and row number 2, we must stop and must not proceed any further. These cells must be left blank. Similarly, if we are at row number 4, let's say, then we must stop at column number 4 and we must not fill the next cell after this. This means that the stopping value depends upon the row number. So, if we are at row number 4, we must stop at column number 4. If we are at row number 3, then we must stop at column number 3. And it can be observed that the start value always remains the same. It is always 1. But stop value depends upon the row number. Therefore, i plus 1 is provided here. If i is 1, then this becomes 2. Therefore, the stop value will be 1. Hence, j will only receive value 1. This is the stop value. If i is 3, then this becomes 4. We will get values 1, 2 and 3 from this range function. This means that the stop value is 3 in this case, as i is 3. In this way, we can proceed and we can print the values correctly. I hope you got the idea. Now, within this for loop, we need the print statement to print the correct value on the screen. If we are at row number 1 and column number 1, we must print 1. We know that these values depends upon the row numbers. If we are at row number 1, we must print 1. If we are at row number 2, we must print 2's. This means that we just need to print i on the screen. This second argument is also needed because after printing every value, we must add a white space after it. These two values are separated by a white space. Similarly, these two values are also separated by a white space. 
Every two value is separated by a white space. Hence, after printing the value, we must print the white space. This is the reason why we need this second argument in this print function. Now, if we are at row number 1 and column number 1, then value 1 will be printed on the screen. And we know that at this point, this for loop terminates. And after this, we need a new line. Because after printing this value, we need to go to the next line and print the rest of the values. After printing these values, then we go to the next line. This means that after completion of this for loop, we need this print statement. This allows us to print a new line. And in this way, we can print all these values on the screen. This is how our program looks like. Now let's run this code line by line to better understand how this code works. The first step is to receive the input from the user. First, this prompt will be displayed. So, this prompt will be displayed on the screen. Enter the number of rows. Let's say the user has entered 5. We will receive 5 here. This means that rows variable is now pointing to 5. Now after this, we need to execute this statement for i in range 1 comma rows plus 1. We know that rows is 5. Therefore, this will be replaced by 5. 5 plus 1 is 6. Hence, we will get 6 here. This means we will get 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 from this range function. These values will be received by variable i one at a time. First, variable i will receive value 1. Therefore, this time, variable i is pointing to value 1. Now, after this, we need to execute this statement. For j in range 1 comma i plus 1, we know that i is 1, 1 plus 1 is 2. Therefore, we'll get 1 comma 2 here. This range function will return only one value, which is 1. So, variable j will receive value 1 and that's what we want. So, this time variable j is pointing to value 1. Now, after this, we need to execute this print statement. This means that i will be printed on the screen along with the white space. Therefore, we will get 1 on the screen. After this, we know that this statement will be executed. This means that we will move to the next line. Now, this statement will be evaluated once again. This time, variable i will receive value 2. After this, we need to execute this statement. Variable j will receive value 1 initially. And then after this, we need to print i on the screen, which means that 2 will be printed on the screen along with the white space. Then we need to evaluate this statement once again. This time, variable j will receive value 2. Understand this that here, i plus 1 will be replaced by 3 because i is 2 at this time. So, we will get 1 and 2 from this range function. We have already received 1 in variable j. Now, we will get 2 here. After this, this print statement will be evaluated. This means that value of i along with the white space will be printed on the screen. So, 2 and white space will be printed on the screen. Then after this, this statement will be evaluated because the for loop is terminated at this point. Now, we need to move to the next line. After this, this statement will be evaluated. Variable i this time will receive value 3. Therefore, we must replace this value by 3. And after this, we need to execute this statement. We know that value of i is 3 at this point in time. Therefore, this must be replaced by 3. 3 plus 1 is 4. Therefore, we will get 4 here. And this means that from this range function, we will get values 1, 2 and 3. These values are received by variable j. At this point in time, variable j will receive value 1. Now, we need to execute this statement. We need to print i on the screen and then the white space. Value of i is 3. Therefore, 3 will be printed along with the white space. After this, this statement will again be executed. This time, j will receive value 2 and value of i will be printed on the screen with the white space. So, we will get 3 on the screen and then the white space. After this, this statement is again executed. This time, j will receive 3 and then after this, this statement is again executed. This means 3 is printed on the screen along with the white space. 
then this statement is evaluated this means we will move to the next line and then after this we can continue to evaluate these statements i hope you got the idea up to this point how these values are printed on the screen now i'm going to display the rest of the values here so in this way we will get all these values on the screen and at the end value of i is 5 and value of j is 5 So with this I hope it is clear how this program works. In this way we can print this number pattern on the screen and this program is flexible enough to print any size right triangle number pattern. In order to verify this let's run this code in Visual Studio Code. I have opened the Python work folder in this Visual Studio Code and I have opened the right triangle number pattern.py in my editor. and it can be observed that we have the same code here which we have seen in the presentation now let's execute this code in the terminal let's open the new terminal let's type python then space and then name of this file followed by the extension .py now let's hit enter let's enter the number of rows here Let's first enter five, and let's see whether we are getting the number pattern or not. We are getting the same number pattern. Now, let's execute this program once again. This time, let's enter ten. Let's hit enter. We are getting this number pattern. So we are getting the correct number patterns every time. We can execute this code once again. This time, let's enter eight. We are getting this number pattern. I hope with this it is clear how to display these number patterns on the screen. We have verified this code in Visual Studio Code and we have seen that we can print the right triangle number pattern of any size that we want. With this we are now done with this lecture. We have understood how to print the right triangle number pattern on the screen. Okay friends, this is it for now. Thank you for watching this presentation. I will see you in the next one.